why sending bad emails is not worth the risk. Okay, in this week's video, we're going to take a look at what are the implications of sending email marketing to bad lists. Okay, first up, let's take a look at what we mean by bad data. Bad lists are lists of email addresses where the recipients have not asked to receive your mailer. Your company will be completely unknown to them. If they haven't followed your opt-in process, they won't know who you are. Sometimes you may see large lists of email addresses for sale or business contacts may offer you to trade databases. As tempting as it may be to suddenly increase your list of email addresses quickly and easily, it's never a good idea to do this. So why is it not a good idea to send to these addresses? Well, first and probably the largest reason is the legal implications. If these addresses are consumers, then the law states that anyone that you are mailing needs to have asked to receive your mailer. If challenged, you need to be able to provide proof of how and where these people have opted in to receive your marketing. The legislation in place here is the Electronic Communications Act, and over recent years it's had a few revisions, but it is very clear about emailing consumers, clearly detailing what is and isn't legal. Now, the Information Commissioner's Office investigate all complaints and have the power to impose some pretty significant fines. The next area is domain and reputation damage. Email filtering companies refer to block lists when deciding if your email is going to be delivered, blocked or put into junk. If your company domain name appears on one of these block lists, then any email that you send from your domain will be blocked. Now appearing on one of these lists is potentially catastrophic as this affects every email that you send, not just your email marketing, it covers anything sent using your company domain name. So how would sending to a bad list block your company domain name? If a recipient feels that your mailer is unwanted spam, then they can easily complain to their internet service provider or log you as a spammer through their filtering software. The next area is sending server damage. If a recipient receives your mailer and they don't recall asking to receive it, they will probably hit the marker's spam button inside their browser. Every sending server has a percentage score that is affected by positive and negative history. When the recipient marks a spam, this records as negative history. If the percentage score starts to drop, then future mailings will have an increased chance of being classed as spam all being blocked and ended up in the spam filter. This means that the success of future mailings will be impaired by the damage caused by sending to one of these bad lists. Can I easily repair the damage caused? Now doing this is very hard indeed. Finding out who has blocked you and why are incredibly difficult things to do. Even when you find out who is holding the block list, often they will not accept removal requests. So how do I stop all of this from happening in the first place? Well, unlike the rest of the answers in this video, this one is a quick and easy one. Only send marketing emails to people that have asked to receive them from you. In short, don't send spam. 